Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in, NFL Week 17 Gambling Picks. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. And this is Winning Cures Everything. Of course, you can find us at winningcureseverything.com. You can find all of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, uh, social media platforms. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, leave us some comments. Tell us which picks you like this week, which ones you don't. It is, uh, it is always a difficult week to figure out what the motivations will be for some of these teams. Um, and so it's it's more just a coin flip this week, <laughs> and we'll see what happens. So uh, the show is always brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books, along with great golf courses, great steakhouses, great concerts, and comedians that are coming through town all the time. You can find all that information over at tunicatravel.com. And we're also brought to you by smackapparel.com. Go over there, use promo code WIN, W-I-N. You get 20% off your order. Anything over 40 bucks, uh, any order over 40 bucks is going to ship for free. They got great gear, great shirts, great merch, et cetera, from all your favorite pro and college teams. Uh, it's really good stuff. Smackapparel.com, promo code WIN will get you 20% off. It, let's let's go ahead and fire in. We're, uh, we're not going to have DJ this week. Um, so we're just doing picks, and we're going to make it fairly quick for you. Uh, That's Chris, right. I'm, I'm going to let you go ahead and, and start us off here. Uh, what do you have for uh, for pick number one? Pick number one. I think Vegas is wrong. I, I I think they have read this game inappropriately. Now, maybe they have information that I don't. I'm guessing. But I'm going to Baltimore. And I think these guys are going to play. They've got home field advantage throughout the playoffs locked up. They are going to get the first week by. If you listen to our preview show, you've already heard me rant about this. I don't think these coaches want players to have two weeks off in a row. I think it's bad for them to sit around and not play football for two weeks. Practicing is not playing, and 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 I think playing matters. I think they're going to show up. I also think – It doesn't matter, second string, third string, practice squad guys. Steelers aren't scoring on anybody. They're they're just not, okay? So if you can get in field goal range enough for Justin Tucker to slap a few through, you're going to win this game. It's a one-point line. You're picking a winner. Give me Baltimore. I think these guys play, and I think if they play, they win like they've beat everybody else pretty handily. I mean, 17, 20 points. I mean, that's just what they've been doing to everybody that's not the elite teams. I uh, I am siding with you here. I'm going to take that as well. I'm putting 100 bucks on it. You're doing 100 on each of your Yeah, games. yeah. Well, I, we we kind of – I quit messing with the money a while back just yeah, because we, we, we realized <laughs> we started with $4,000 and it was way too much and we didn't handle this thing right. So. Yep, you got that right. So, at 100 bucks each on that. Uh, I, I've got 100 on it with the Ravens as well. I think even if they do play RG3 and a bunch of backups – they're still going to be able to outscore the Steelers because, I mean, James Conner got another injury. Uh, Juju hadn't been playing that much. Nope. They, they just got dudes hurt everywhere. Mason Rudolph got a shoulder thing now. Um, it, Duck, even if he's healthy, I mean, he's going to give the ball to the other team now. So, he's not good. No. He's not good. No, you're we right. We got to start him because he didn't kill us. Well, this, yeah, uh, man, get careful with that. Careful with that. This line <laughs> opened at the Ravens minus three, and it's been bet all the way down to one. It's at a pick at five dimes. Yeah, um, there, there are some sharps out there that fully believe the Ravens don't care. They've locked everything up, so they're going to rest guys. I, don't forget, I, this is a rivalry game, too. Yes, you know? you're right. Yeah, you, If you're going to keep somebody out of the playoffs, you want it to be this team. But I just don't. I don't know that the teams that have everything locked up, the bye week's locked up. Now, if you're fighting for a bye week, you want that bye week. You're fighting like hell for that. But if you've got the bye locked up, I don't know that many of these coaching staffs and front offices want your guys to be have two weeks off. Yeah, I mean, you, you get out of your routine. It's just it's not a it's not a good thing. All right, so we're both taking Ravens minus one here. Um, I like that. Uh, first game for me. Let's see. Write my time down here. I am going. Redskins plus ten and a half at the Cowboys, putting a hundred bucks on that. Uh, I I don't think this Cowboys team is good enough right now. Even if they come out fired up, the Redskins are still fighting. I don't think they're good enough to beat this team by more than ten points. So I I'm going to take the Skins plus the ten and a half here. Uh, it, it makes no sense to me 
Uh, and actually, I'm looking at the board now. I mean, there's several spots where you can get it at 11 or 11 and a half. Um, but I, I'll take it at the 10 and a half, which is where it is at, at most places. Um, I think the skins come out fired up. They, it, this is not for seeding or, or anything like that in the NFL draft anymore. Uh, I think the skins want to get a win. It's a rivalry game, you know, at, and I wonder how dejected the Cowboys are after losing last week. And so give me, give me the skins. Yeah, I like that pick. I like that pick. All right, next game up for me. <clears throat> San Francisco going to Seattle. I think, A, Seattle's a little banged up right now. They, they are a little bit of a shell of themselves. Uh, reports are they are trying to sign Marshawn Lynch for the playoff roster. Marshawn's not going to help you this week. Uh, when the 49ers come up there, and uh, you just got you just got blowed out by by Brett Hundley, okay? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I can't help you much. Uh, I think the 49ers are going to beat you up. Also, this is a team that ended their winning streak. They were the last undefeated team. Uh, they went into San Francisco. They took it from them, and uh, that started the the, the gauntlet that they kind of went on, and uh, they win this, and they are home field throughout, number one seed overall in the NFC. It all goes through Santa Clara, and, and I think that's going to happen. I think they're going to beat Seattle pretty bad. I'm not afraid of laying the three points. I'm uh, I'm with you on that one as well. I'm, I'm putting 100 bucks on that one um, for all the exact reasons that you just gave. Like, I, I love the 49ers here. Um, as of right yeah. now, Chris Carson's not playing. Um, I, I think uh, – uh, I don't remember if Penny's playing another running back. But, I mean, they've got they've got a list, a litany of guys that are banged up and hurt for Seattle right now. I love Russell Wilson, and he can't do it by himself. No, no, sure can't. Uh, this like if there is no running game, obviously, like that probably leads you into what your your strength is anyway, which is Russell Wilson. But it, I mean, they're going to be able to get pressure on him all day, all I think day, so. all I think day so. long. Uh, next game up for me. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go to New York, and I'm taking the Giants plus four and a half against the Eagles. I think the Eagles put everything they had into that game against the Cowboys. Yes, they still have to get the win, but pressure can sometimes get to people. I understand that the uh, the Eagles showed up a little bit, but I think a lot of that was Dallas not showing up. And I think the Giants are playing really, really well right now. I don't know that they get the win, but four and a half seems like too much for me. I would take um, – I'm going to go with the Giants – to cover this four and a half. I think this is a field goal kind of game. And, I mean, these these two teams played to overtime in Philly just a few weeks ago, and that was with Eli Manning at quarterback. Uh, I think with a healthy Daniel Jones, you got more options. Uh, you, you got a, a better passer right now. Like, maybe not over the span of a career, but Daniel Jones has shown that he can uh, he can fling that thing around. I like the Giants plus four and a half here for 100 bucks. There you go. All right. I think the Bears Vikings game is going to matter to the Vikings next week. Uh, we're trying to predict the future. We're recording this on Monday, Christmas Eve Eve, and uh, I think they're going to need it. I also think the Bears can't score when anybody difficult uh, plays them a little bit of defense, and uh, <clears throat> this is going to be it. I'm calling it for uh, the the Mitchell Trubisky era in Chicago. This will be his swan song. It will go out like a flame. And uh, the Vikings are going to handle it right now. Now, we are recording this before the Vikings play. The line that we are able to find is seven. Yes. So that's the line I'm using. I have no idea what that line will actually be when time comes, but I can only go with what I want it or with what I can find. And uh, and I'm seeing seven across the board. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lay the seven. I think the Vikings kind of beat up on the Bears. I think uh, the Chiefs showed that uh, – <laughs> You don't have to put up a ton of points to be able to cover seven against the uh, against the Bears because they're That's not going right. to score. Well, because because they're, they're going to struggle to score three. Yeah, I mean it's a, they, they, that was such an ugly game. Good gracious, the Bears looked so and the bad. Chiefs' defense not not as good as it looked on Sunday night. No, and and definitely not as good as the Vikings' defense. Uh, not close. I'll I'll tell you that right now. Uh, next game up for me, uh, I am rolling over to Carolina. I'm going to take the Saints minus 13 at the Panthers. Uh, the Saints still still have to get that bye, still have to win. They're going to play their guys in order to get the bye. And, That's right. And I think that they are going to do that. Um, I mean, you, you win this, you get to 13 wins on the season. Pretty good record. Pretty good to win 13 out of 16, right? 
Not That's a, right. Not too shabby. Drew Brees. Considering you missed four games of your, your, your quarterback. A five. Missed five. Five games. That's right. Actually, yeah. It was five. That's right. And so, missed missed five with Brees. Uh, I think Breeze comes out and, and smacks these guys around. The Panthers look like they are just done with this season. They're ready for the offseason. Um, uh, we, we talk all the time about, you know, there's still guys fighting for jobs and all this kind of stuff. Uh, it, look, I think they've been through so much this year that they just don't even care. Like, yeah. they're they're just done. Um, I mean, they, they got just whipped by a terrible Colts team last week. Um, and that, the, the Colts have been – Decent all year, don't get me wrong, but the Colts were missing so many guys that to go out and get embarrassed like that, I mean, it 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 kind of shows you a little something about their motivation. I don't think they care about this. I think the Saints do. They're going to come out. Michael Thomas is going to keep adding to uh, that record that he set last week, which was the uh, number of receptions in a season, and he'll have you know ten in this game, whatever it is. And they're going to put up some points. They will win by more than the 13 here. Give me Saints minus 13 for $100 against the Panthers. Love that pick. I'm going the exact same way. Um, I I think the Saints are – they are – we talked about it. You talked about it. They're, they're fighting for that two seed. It matters. And uh, and the Panthers are just done. They, they, they are just not – they don't know what to do right now offensively. Yeah. And, uh, and that, that makes it – really really hard to to win football games i mean it it makes it virtually impossible so all the things you said i'm riding with that same pick saints minus 13 uh, who uh who you got for your last pick last pick this is a bit of um uh, i need the broncos in this game <laughs> before the season started i made a lot of of over under bets on a bunch of teams did really well with that, by the way. Went through those tickets last night to see what I'm throwing away, what I can already cash, what I need to, to, a couple of W's to get by. And I got a big Broncos over seven wins ticket. I need a win here. I need a, I need a big win. They've looked so much better, so much better uh, uh, since, um, oh, my gosh, I'm really doing bad with names today. Drew Locke. Drew Locke, you see, I'm glad that you know who I'm thinking of. Uh, since Drew Locke has taken over this offense, this team looks great. It The defense looks so invigorated. Amazing. They don't have to be on the field for, you know, 75 snaps a game, and the defense is really good. That's, that's incredible. It's like the best way to play defense is to not play defense. Um, and Phil Lindsay just looks like, all I need is a little bit of help, and I can be one of these running backs that everybody talks about. And he didn't get it. No matter who the quarterback was for the last two years, he didn't get it. And he's got it now, and he is running like a champ. I'm telling you, I know the Raiders still have a hope at, at a playoff spot, and the Broncos have nothing to play for, but this is a divisional game. And, I, man, Denver, is they're not going to want to lose at home to the Raiders. They are going to come out. They're going to fight like hell. And and I I think Phil Lindsay is going to run Rupshaw minus four. I, I need this push. I need this win right here. I'm winning something on this game, and I'm pushing the ticket and getting my money back. All right, so will you? Uh, what, what's the line that you got on it? A four. I got minus four. four. All right. I'll, I'll go on and give you minus three and a half because it's, oh, can you find it three and a half? You can find it minus three and a half at. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. It, uh, pretty much across oh, the board. everywhere. It, yeah, it, Holy it's, crap. it's the dropping. one place I looked was minus. <laughs> yep, yep. But there's there's right. multiple books dummy. that have it minus three and a half. So I'll, I'll give you that. There you go. Um, I my last game here, I'm going to take the Browns minus two and a half at the Bengals. I think the Bengals are just about done with this season. They they gave their last gasp effort in Miami. And got whipped. I think that the Browns are significantly better than Miami. Um, it's it's at two minus two and a half across the board. It opened at minus three. Uh, I think the Browns. You know, there's still a little bit of pride here. And sin, I mean, you lose to Cincy, and it's just it, it, fire everybody. And they're probably going to fire everybody anyway. But it, there is, you know, there's all this talk about Urban Meyer coming in. Um, there's all this talk about Urban Meyer will at least be 
uh, an advisor for the coaching God. search, like all of this. Irvin just um, taking money from everybody. Believe that. Believe. Why that. are people asking his opinion? Well, we I think we can understand why the Haslam's would ask it, right? I mean, good gracious, uh, Jimmy Haslam it just it doesn't know what to do with this uh, with this football team, and we. I mean, but he's got too many front office people already. He doesn't yeah. need another person to tell him what to do. He needs one per. The problem is, is the Browns are. But I'm gonna crap on your point here for a minute, okay? Go ahead. I'm gonna crap on your pick. They're, they're gonna lose this game. They're absolutely gonna lose this game because the the a that team has quit the very definition of quit. They've quit on Freddie and they've quit on Baker. By the way, but I, I think these receivers bought into him before the season started. And was this guy's firing? And he's going to defend us, and he's going to this, and he's going to that. And no, uh, he can't get me the ball. And so it doesn't matter how much he fights for me in the press conference. He can't get me the damn ball. We are all suffering because this guy can't hit open throws, and that moron on the sideline doesn't know what he's doing either. And and I, I think I think this team has quit completely. The Bengals have been sandbagging everything. And now they've locked up what they want to lock up. They get Mr. Joseph Burrow number one overall, and that's all they want in this world. They've already got their Christmas present. The next thing they get to do is just poop all over the Browns before it's all over with. <laughs> that this is this is the most Browns year that you're ever gonna have. Before, they've been boring and terrible and not interesting to talk about. And then they went out and they spent all this money and they got all this flash. They talked all this noise and I was part of it. Okay. Yeah. And then they did exactly what we expect the Browns to do. They, they just kept losing, losing, losing. Over and over again, Baker Mayfield had to come out with more and more second press conferences after the first press conferences to apologize or to explain or whatever the things that he says because he's an idiot. Yeah. He's also not very good at football, by the way. He's been figured out by everybody out there. That vaulted Cardinals defense that's 31 or 32 in the league in every statistical category held him to almost nothing. Yeah. No, yeah, I, I'm, I understand where you're coming from. That organization is – oh, and, and so let me get back to the Haslam's, by the right, way. Go ahead. I'm going to end this rant after that. I've already given that my pick, so like we're four, just ending on this. <laughs> that, that, guy, that guy's got four or five different people in that front office that are all advising him, and all of them want to do something different. You have a pro talent wins over everything else guy and Dorsey picking players, but there's no plan. There's no, there's no build a culture. There's no, we need this type of guy and this type of guy, which just who's the best athlete. Let's go get that guy. And then you've got other guys that are like former baseball guys that are all analytics driven that are trying to do things. And you, you, if you want to go all analytics, go analytics, but you can't have a toe here and a toe here and a toe here and try to piecemeal a team. Because then you have no team. You just have everybody who has a different section of the of the program all built in, in their likeness. But but you've got this weird Picasso painting that that doesn't make any sense to anybody. Yeah, I mean, if it was a painting, that'd be one thing. Because you, and you've got some so moron from Alabama who can barely put two sentences together. That. That's running the thing. That's oh, we're gonna let him drive this. By the way, this is the <laughs> this is the this is the genius behind it all right here. And why did we pick this moron? Because our rookie quarterback, a guy that's twenty something years old, who's never started in this league ever, other than last year, one year in, we're gonna let him decide who the head coach is gonna be for this off for this team. That and makes it's, a lot it's of the sense. difference between the NFL and the NBA. <laughs> with the NBA, you got to have somebody that your guys get along with. Um, because there's only five guys on the court, so each one of them matters big time. Mm. In the NFL, mm. um, they don't. They don't. The star matters in the well, NBA. That's, okay, that's that's where I'm going from. It's if you got LeBron, you're going to be pretty good. If if you got Giannis, you're going to be pretty good in the NBA. Like, that's, and you're going to listen to those guys. Yeah, and you're listening to them because you have to keep them on your roster. You have yes. to keep them playing. They are all entitled and empowered. Um, in the NFL, it's not the case. Uh, you you need all of your guy your fifty three man roster. You need them all together as well. But you need an adult in the room. You don't need somebody that's buddies with your quarterback. You need somebody that's going to actually coach him. And that's that's where the Browns got into trouble with this. Um, 
I do still think they've got more talent than the Bengals. I think they're going to play better. I think they're going to win this ball game. They've had more talent than every team they lost to. Well, not every, but I mean, it, there, there's very few teams in this. They're league. significantly more talented than yeah. the Patriots from top to bottom on just a talent thing. If you were going to take college recruiting rankings and rank these guys as athletes on what they are in the league. They're yeah. significantly more talented than a team like the Patriots that have the number two overall seed in the AFC. That's, I mean, you you have a valid point, but this That's, is this the, is the difference matters. between culture and play and one person's vision. You don't have to be Bill. You don't have to be a genius, but everybody's vision in the building has to be the same. What? Well, look at the Eagles. I mean, they're about to make the playoffs yes. for uh, for what? How many years in a row is this? Um, but, yeah, I don't know, but it's it's been a while, and yeah. But they, they're all on the same page. They all get it. They go out. They play to a standard. Uh, it's not always great. They got a bunch of guys hurt, but it's not this varying up and down thing every single week. And that is that is one unison vision, and that's not even the head coach. That's, that's the GM in Philadelphia who has one vision, and he's built this team in, in the likeness and the way in which he wants to build it. Yeah, And you just don't have that in Cleveland. You don't. If Dorsey got to build the team 100% and had all say in everything, then it might look a lot like it still looks. But I think there would be different parts to it, and, and they would still be doing some things differently. I think there would be a different the, coach. Yeah, probably. If the analytics guys were able to run it the way they would, the, excuse me, the team would look drastically different. But, but at the end of the day – Jimmy's biggest problem, Mike Lombardi worked for this man, okay? And Lombardi talks on his podcast all the time about how Jimmy will sit and listen to anybody and ask them about his team. He will walk up to strangers in a coffee shop and ask them about his team and what they think he needs. The story about the homeless guy saying, you got to take Johnny. Like, yeah, that happened. Not only did that happen, he listened. Yeah, that's a problem. He doesn't know what to do, and he thinks the gathering of information. See, I'm a very big gathering of knowledge from lots of different places to solve problems, I, and I'm okay with that. But at the end of the day, one person has to be the decision maker, yeah. and that person has to be the decision maker for all of the decisions. Yeah. It can't be you make these decisions, and this guy's going to make these decisions, and this lady over here is going to make these decisions. No, no, no. At the end of the day, the buck has to stop with the same person, it doesn't stop with Jimmy, and he's got too many different people running too many different aspects of the Browns. So bringing Urban in, it's not going to help the problem. That's just going to be another guy giving his opinion and his voice to it. Yeah. Uh, the the only thing that will change with the Browns is is if they get a new owner. That's the only thing. But I don't even know that they need a new owner. At some point in time, Jimmy, somebody has to be strong enough to walk into the room and tell Jimmy, you want my opinion on the team. My opinion is is you have way too many Chiefs. You just have way too many Chiefs and not enough Indians. Is, uh, you, is, is Urban Meyer strong enough to be able to do that? I don't know that Urban wants to do that because then Urban Meyer's pick. The problem is, is if you do that, I would walk in and I would say, I'm not saying I have to be the guy, but you have to, you have to placate all ownership of the team to one person. Yeah. And that person has to build this thing in their likeness with their plan. And I don't care who it is. It might not be me. But if it's going to be me, it's got to be all me. And you've got to give me multiple. Here, it, First, I've got to tell you my plan so you have an idea of what it's going to look like. And then you've got to be okay where if there's some ups and downs, you can deal with those. Yeah. But I, I would tell you the first thing I would want to do if I got to take over the general manager of the Browns, and I don't know if anybody's still listening at all, they probably don't care. But if I got <laughs> to play God and I got to be the general manager of the Browns, the first thing I would do is I would be very honest with Jimmy about my thoughts and opinions on Baker. And it would be, I'm not saying that he is a bust, but I think it would be very valuable to bring in somebody who will give him very big competition. And and I'm going to tell you this, that you know, you know how I feel. And I've made this statement multiple times. A guy that I think in this year's draft that will cost you nothing is Ian book. Yeah. And I would bring him in. And I would, I would make it very clear to Baker, and just like every other person on the team, everybody on the 53-man roster, nobody's job is sacred. Everybody's replaceable. We're all competing every day. And if he beats you, 
he beats you. I don't care that you were the number one overall pick. I do I do like your point there. I do like that. Um, and maybe that's what Baker needs. Baker had to fight for everything he got in college. You know that? He yeah. always had to fight to earn that spot. And then because he was the first overall pick, he was just given the spot. This is the first well, time he's ever it, been given anything but, on a podium. But no, no, no. Look, look, look. He played really well last year. Yeah. But he was not the starter coming into the season. Started as a backup. That's right. This is the first year he's been handing it to him on a podium. And he knew it was his before the season started. That's the first time in his life that that's ever happened. And maybe Hugh Jackson was on to something. Like, I, like we don't want to give well, Hugh no, much we're not going to give nothing. Hugh credit for that. Okay, but I mean, just saying, it's. I, I, I just think there's something to him having to fight for stuff. Maybe he's not the bust. My problem is mechanically, he does not look good. No, and he can be figured out, and that's what worries me. Is he put together six to seven games last year that he looked unbelievable. But, man, that's a real small sample size. And this entire season, man, there's not one game where he looked great. Now, Even in that Ravens game where they kicked the crap out of him, Chubb ran for like 300 yards on him. Yeah. No, that's you, you're 100% right about that. 100% right about that. All right. That is going to wrap up our NFL Week 17 picks. Uh, we'll be back next week with the playoffs and whatnot. We hope everybody has a Merry Christmas. Merry uh, Christmas, uh, uh, happy folks. Happy holidays, all that kind of stuff. Uh, of course, go over to winningcureseverything.com. Go to smackapparel.com. Use promo code WIN. You'll get 20% off your order. And any order over $40 is going to ship for free. And go to tunicatravel.com. Uh, Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They bring you the show every single time. Uh, they have been fantastic to us. They'll be fantastic to you. I promise it is worth a visit. Go down and check it out. Make sure you enter in the picks contest over at winningcureseverything.com. Uh, great prizes from Tunica. Always a good time. Uh, I think that's going to wrap it up. Anything else? No, sir. That's Have a good it. one, brother. Have a good week, everybody. We will see you all again next week. Hopefully, it is profitable for you. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.